So in this video we're going to look at the valve on the engine. As the valve opens it controls the airflow into the engine and the flow of the exhaust gases out of the engine. And it's a significant part of the way an engine works and how efficient it is and how much power we can actually make. Now we're thinking particularly of the curtain area. This is the gap that opens up around the valve as it opens. And we're going to look at ways of optimising that curtain to get as much airflow around the valve into the engine and out of the engine as possible. So it's not just the valve itself and the shape over the valve that we need to focus on. The actual seat of the valve, where it sits in the engine, you can make some cuts into that, changing the angles and maximising the airflow around that as well. You certainly want to match up the angle that you've done on the valve where it actually mates with the valve seat, just to give you the, the best seal possible to make sure there's no leaky areas there or at weak spots that could cause you problems in the long run. So it's a very holistic approach to valve jobs. It's not just work that you would do on the valve. There's also merits to making the valve itself lighter. Lighter valves will respond more quickly and put less strain on the valve springs and other components within the engine head itself. But that's a whole discussion for another video in a future topic. So we can see on this older engine, the valves are not the regular trumpet shape that we would tend to associate. They're much more barrel shaped. Now they were certainly effective back then, but they weren't optimized anywhere near as well for power as you would get on a modern engine. So looking at your typical modern engine, there's so much technology that have gone into the valves and some manufacturers have even started filling the valves with sodium, which takes the heat away from the valve and can actually resist the risk of detonation or knock from happening in the engine where you've got hot spots on the valve. So it's going to be interesting to see what developments happen over the years with regard to airflow and it'll be interesting as well to see if they just disregard the use of a cam altogether and have completely motor controlled valve systems which, which will give you much more flexibility and control over the way the valves open and close on the engine. So what about large valve conversions? So this is where you actually open up the valves themselves and the ports they sit in and just maximize them. So the scope you've got depends very much on the design of your head. On 20 valve heads, they tend to have quite a few crammed in there. There's usually always scope for increasing a mil or two, um, but your engine is quite unique. Whatever engine you've got, you really do need to do your research on it and just see what larger valve kits and conversions are actually possible on that head design. So with a lot of different manufacturers though, the easiest way of upgrading your head and maybe going to larger ports or going to a twin cam design is actually just to swap the head. So do your research, you will often find that different models within the same range, even with different engine capacities, use the same head design. So you want to make sure that the channels on the head match up with your engine block, particularly the oil and the cooling. And it's an obvious given that the cylinder apertures have to match up perfectly as well. But that might be an option. So you've got an engine, get your new head with the twin cam characteristics that you want, the larger valves that the manufacturer offers in the performance variant. Get that flow tested and optimized and then fit it to your car. The benefit of doing that is you're not off the road for a long period of time. So normally you would take the head off your engine, get that worked on, and then when it's ready, you would put it back on your engine. And you can't use your car without a head unless you've got a willing family member that's happy to push the car wherever you need it to go. So uh, there's a little shortcut really to getting things done. I've seen people as well with project cars to have their daily driver, but to have an engine in the garage that they're developing that's got all of the performance parts and options in. So they can spend as long as they want setting that up and perfecting it. And then it becomes a straight engine swap project at the end and your car is not off the road for long periods of time. Hope this video has been useful to you. If you haven't subscribed, please do so. So we would love you to stay tuned. So thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.